Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about animatronic eyes. This is a very simple three servo setup. So we have one servo controlling the eyes looking left and right. We have two servos controlling the eyelids. The entire thing is 3D printed and it's a very easy, simple mechanism to make for Halloween decoration, Christmas decoration, an animatronic project you've always been wanting to do. Right now I have it running off the Maestro, but I will show other ways to uh, operate something like this or other, other ways you can connect it and control it. Let's get started. So here are all the parts that we're gonna be using to make this uh, animatronic eye. First and foremost, uh, all of the parts were designed in the computer and then 3D printed. The parts are all made of ABS plastic, so they're a little bit more durable. I, I printed them on a strong or strength feature, so there's lots of walls in here. I think there's most of the pieces are solid because of the wall thickness on them. So thin areas like this and this and this are all solid parts or so, solid plastic. So that gives it just a good deal of bit of uh, rigidity and it should last for what I'm using these things for. Uh, same with the eyelids. So basically what I've done is I've gone through and I have opened up any hole that is a pass-through hole and I have tapped, drilled out and tapped any hole that needs to re receive threads. So in the case of the eyelids, this goes together like that. There is an outer portion or an outer, outer piece that has a through hole and the screw taps into this so it allows the parts to pivot on each other. And so each one of the parts has a different set of circumstances like this part right here. It's threaded on one side and it is tapped or sorry a pass through hole on the opposite side. Uh, and that's just because uh, of the, where it's going to be linked and where things are going to be attached. The other thing I'd like to talk about, and so real quick, I want to just mention this is called an E-bar. It's typically called an E-bar because of the shape of uh, the prongs there that are uh, sticking out. The eyes are going to be attached to these two posts, and then the eyelids are going to rotate off the central point here. The eyes, in order to print them, and I... I have changed up a couple different ways I've done these. So the eye is not fully rounded or like an orb or half hemisphere. Uh, so I have made it so that I can't have glued a paper printout of an eye on there. And then that very simply goes into a vacuum form part to allow it to look like an eye. So I have prepped a couple eyes with, with the printout and I have a couple of vacuum formed pieces and that will, you'll see those all in the next step here as I start to assemble all of this, but that part will be done. Those And those, the paper is just simply glued on there. I'm gonna be experimenting with uh, some clear resins over the eyes as well in a future video. But uh, for today, I'm just going to use the vacuum formed plastic as my lens. First thing you should do is center your servos. If you don't, the servos could break the mechanism or do things you are not expecting it to do. Any simple servo tester will work.
one thing you can do when designing this e-bar, and whenever I do 3D printing, I measure the dimensions of my servos and I model the servos so that the servos can fit into the assembly. So just by modeling the servos, you don't have to be an exact copy of the servo, it just has to need to be the basic dimensions that are gonna fit within the, the confines of the plastic and then just make sure that it does fit that way and when you're designing it. The other thing I was gonna say that you can do with a eye like this, depending on how much space you have. Now, I did it, I made this eye set up this way because I have very little room on the outside edges at all. So actually I have no room. So that's why I don't have anything over here to support the outside corners of it. But if you do have room, if you're doing maybe a human head or you know something larger and you have you have space for something out here, you can make this e-bar a little bit longer this way and give it one extra arm that comes up and attaches where that screw attaches. So it gives you basically just a much more firm attachment point. Uh, you can see these eyelids are fairly firm with everything attached and everything on there. But if you wanted it to be a little stronger, you could make it so that there was an, an actual arm that fits right on there and it is attached to this end of the bar. And you'd have the exact same thing on the opposite end. Of course, the bar has to, this e-bar has to come out a little bit further to meet up with something like that. But I hope you get the idea. All right, so we're done with the building of the animatronic. So the next step is to get it to move. You know, I'm again using 3D printed parts, all readily, you know, really easy to design, really easy to uh, build and assemble. I'm this mechanism has three servos. It's a very, very simple mechanism in terms of how everything moves. Uh, it's fairly robust and, and should work, you know, very well depending on the project, depending on, you know, maybe how much tension there is on the eyes, if there is any tension on the eyes from, from a skin or something like that. But how do we make it move? What's, what's the next step for making it move? Well, one of the options is to use a transmitter. A transmitter like this, this is a, a low cost one. This is actually the one I use to test things on my bench. They can range from, you know, $50 on up to uh, five or $600, depending on the brand, depending on, you know, the functionality. This particular one is six channels. They have as many channels as you might need. This animatronic is three servos, so it'd be a channel for each servo. So you need to use three of the channels associated with a transmitter. Basically what you would do is you would have a small receiver like this that would be attached somewhere inside of the animatronic or maybe with the eyes. And each one of the servos would be plugged into a channel corresponding to whichever channel you wanted to operate with the remote or with the transmitter. So that's that's one one option. The other option and the option I'm going to do today is I'm going to use uh, a small board from Pololu. It's called a Maestro. This one happens to be the 12 channel. Uh, yeah, so this one's the 12 channel. They have a six channel. They have, I believe, up to a 20 channel, uh, maybe, maybe slightly, or maybe it's 24. At any rate, you can control that number of servos. So this particular board here can control up to 12 servos. We're only controlling three for this, but it will work just fine. And they're, they're relatively inexpensive and super easy to use. And uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how to program this. If you go to the Pololu website, and this isn't sponsored or anything like that. It, if you go to the Pololu website, look up a maestro, and watch their very simple tutorial video. It's fast and simple, and it explains all of the functionality in a very succinct way. So I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm just going to program this little guy and plug it into the eyes. 